I know they're gonna sell, I'll be giving out the keys, giving out the keys. Hey, closing day, best believe that we're gonna take a selfie. Say cheese. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. take oh, a selfie. Good. Say Hello. cheese. Um VIP, um VIP, hey. Welcome back to The Walkthrough, where we walk you through this week's trending topics in real estate. I am your co-host, moderator, and captain of BAM, Dan O'Neill, coming to you live from Long Island, New York. And let me start off by saying, let's go Islanders. If you're wondering why I have Vegas voice, I was screaming my lungs off at the game last night, and they are playoff bound. Not a big deal. Keep the change. Drop a Let's Go Islanders in the comments. And speaking of diehard Islanders fans, as always, I am joined by the needle mover, the face guy, the man with the straight teeth, my genius co-host, the broke agent, Eric Simon. Eric, how you doing? Six months of Invisalign every single day, every single night. That gets you these pearly whites. I'm wearing a hat today. I think I look better on podcasts and hats, so I'm feeling good. And I'm not an Islanders fan. You in are. fact, I'm furious with the Islanders you because are. now it's been two times in a row that you've texted me saying, Islanders money line, Islanders money line. And then they're down 3 nothing in the first period already, and they lost. So do me a favor. Never text me a sports pick ever again. Well, I did text you last night. You didn't take it, so that's on you. We also, we also are joined by two returning guests and highly requested, I might add, uh, we first have the massive agent, Dustin Bro. Dustin, how are you? Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah, when are you going to have me? See, you got to put me on the spot like that. <laughs> you just got pushed back two more months, Dan. No soup for you. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, and we are also joined by, by the visionary, fan favorite from the DMV, Lindsay Joe. Welcome back, girl. How you doing? I'm good. And I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for putting all the topics together and basically being our ghost producer for the last uh, six weeks. Uh, today, <laughs> we're talking it. listing appointment mistakes, important video consumption trends, the real estate wrapper, and much, much more. But before we do, Eric, get a little, yep. little say here, a little, little add. Yeah, we are hosting a BAM mastermind on May 5th in Florida, Naples. You get to golf with us, me, Danny Deals, Ken Pozak, Bobby and Byron Lazine. It's all things marketing. We're doing Instagram audits, and Ken Pozak is going to teach you how to build your YouTube channel from scratch, get you more engagement, get you more subscribers. That guy's the best in the game. We're the best in the game when it comes to Instagram. So hit the link down below. This is going to give you more value than any conference you've ever been to in your entire life. So hit that link. Join us for the mastermind. Yeah, all day. And you get to watch Danny Deals snap hook it out of bounds for 18 straight holes. So that'll be fun also. We're also, I mean, there's breakfast included. We got a round of golf. We, it's a full day and it's at the Ritz and Naples is literally just God's country. It's the most beautiful place in the world. So the ROI on this is going to be 100 X. Um, if I weren't in it, I would, I would pay the money to go. But anyway, 100%. on to topic number one, let's get right into it. This is from BAM staff. This will be in the show notes, video consumption trends revealed and five takeaways for content creators. A new report from HubSpot and Play Play, huh. the video marketing playbook shares the latest <laughs> video marketing research to help marketers create an effective video strategy for 2023. HubSpot's annual State of Video Marketing Survey, do they just do like a, a, a weekly survey, uh, reveals the, the biggest changes in consumer video consumption and why they matter because video and marketing are constantly changing and constantly evolving. So here are the five things. Number one is more than ever, consumers rely on marketing videos to learn more about brands. Number two, and Dustin, you said this a few weeks ago, escapism is one of the top reasons for watching videos and scrolling through social. Number three, consumers are leaning into their passions. Number four, video production quality has become more important. I might disagree with that and I'll tell you why later. And number five, consumers before short form videos. So the shorter, the better. Eric, Mr. Marketing Guru, what did you take away from this article and what can you add to it? Consumers are 52% more likely to share content if it's video content. That stood out to me more than any other stats in this. And then also that consumers want the video to be 60 seconds or less. And like you said, they care a little bit less actually 
about video quality than they do authenticity. So although more people want the quality of the video to be good, 69% of consumers want authenticity and relate, relatability over higher production. So yes. any agent who is you know waiting on a video production staff or lighting or a specific camera, I don't think that matters nearly as much as much as just flipping the phone around and recording yourself. So I thought that was a great stat. And I actually have a video tip here. This is exclusive to the walkthrough. This is something I have discovered. I'm unleashing it here for the first time. You ready for this, Dustin? This is going to blow your hat off of your face. <laughs> you ready? I'm yeah. ready. All right. If you've been following Dan, you've seen this. House of Highlights, ESPN, Complex, No Jumper. They are now not just posting a reel, but they are posting a slideshow in front of their video. Have you seen this? So instead of just posting the reel and worrying about what hook you're going to do, that slideshow is the hook. So they'll just have an intro slide that'll say something like, you know, James Harden crosses up Russell Westbrook. Then you swipe to it, and then it's the actual highlight of the video. So we're going to start seeing, we're going to start doing those on BAM as opposed to just posting the reel. You're going to have a slideshow, and then it's going to post to the video. So that's actually going to take away the reel altogether, but it is going to be a video nonetheless. And then you are incorporating the algorithm more with the slideshow. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I've seen the – dude, I click on those a lot. Are you talking yeah. about a carousel post? Exactly, a carousel post yeah. that, that goes intro slide to video. Yes. Yeah, it has a super uh, – like, there's not a ton of words on it, but just a exactly. very attention-grabbing caption or something that you're like – you're curious. You're like, what? Yep. And then you swipe over. Yeah, there's the video. I click on that shit all the time. That – it always – that doesn't surprise me because that – it gets me. Yeah, yeah. It, it's basically yeah. just a screenshot of what the highlight or what the video is. So if you're doing a video clip, Dustin, you could just screenshot that and then basically, you know, regurgitate it or switch it up in Canva and then swipe. So if and, you're listening and, to this, test that out. I bet you're going to seeing, be seeing a lot more of these. And, and Dustin, so I mean, short, authentic, right? You touched on this a couple of weeks ago, though, escapism, right? So people mm -hmm. are going to social media to laugh, to be entertained. You know, you, you said that a couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, they maybe they sold this from you. You actually used that exact terminology, right, on the last episode of the walkthrough. Um, and as far as, like, production goes, I mean, Matt Leonetti's prime example, right? Matt has his phone. He's in his car. Literally just like a 45-second rant on his phone, whereas I have this huge video production rent out a restaurant. I get video props, right? Like, this whole big commotion, and it gets, like, a quarter of the views, right? So, the video production quality, like so many people are in their head about, you know, making sure that the video quality is so important. Sometimes it's just better yeah. just to take your phone out and do a video. Right, Lindsay? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I also took away like taking inspiration from other accounts too. So weekly I'll go onto broke agent and find like an old meme or something and I'll turn it into a poll. So I'll do a boomerang of my face, do a poll. And then anyone who answers that poll, I'll go and send them a DM. Um, so then you're interacting with, it's an easy way to interact with a hundred agents a day from across the country. Um, and then, you know, kind of build your, your fan base a little bit too. That, that's smart. I should start doing that with my posts. Okay. Also, I like that idea. That's genius. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the first one was uh, more than ever, consumers are relying on videos to learn more about brands. I'm on YouTube and, and Instagram every day just trying to like, whether it's golf or whether it's even like a listing appointment, whatever it is, I'm, I'm constantly searching on social media to help me learn about whatever, whatever my passion is or whatever I'm, I'm looking for. Like Dustin, are you using YouTube in that sense of like kind of being the search searchable agent or you know, like you have obviously your, your massive society and all those things are, are, are you using YouTube and, and Instagram in that, in that way? Yeah, they're certainly different. So Instagram, I use more Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, like all the social networks I use as more of like the trailer, the teaser mm -hmm. and YouTube is where you can dive deep into context. Right. So what's beautiful about that is if people want to hear the context and they see your video on Instagram and you, you say like, Hey, for the full story, go over to my YouTube, or you have something in the caption that says something like that, or even it's just, um, you know, burned onto the, the video. The people that really want to watch more will go to your YouTube and your watch time is going to go through the roof. Uh, right. they, they just perform differently, right? So I think a lot of people forget YouTube is not a social network. It's a search engine. Yes. Now, there's some social components to it, you know, they're at, and it's getting a little bit more social. But ultimately, it is a search engine with a social network attached to it. Yeah. And it just performs differently. Um, and I will say this too, like 
video I'm surprised that people are still surprised that video is so dominant. Like I yeah. we're in a video <laughs> first world, right? <laughs> I know. I know. I, I was I thinking about that. So but, surprised. Like, what else when is we, there? You know? When we sent this article, I was like, really are we good? like I feel like we've done this a billion times where it's just like, yeah, you have to get on video. Oh wow, fifty two percent of people are more likely to share video. Yeah, no shit. Of course they're groundbreaking. Are. We, yeah. we we all it's know like this, but but the trends are interesting, I guess, in the sense that people want 60 seconds or less. I guess we knew yeah. that too. So this is not enlightening, but I, I think the authenticity aspect of it is most important because there are so many realtors that do get the high production value, but they're not getting any engagement because it feels so forced. They're like, okay, I have to get on video. I have to have those captions pop up and I have to be putting out content at mass scale. But then you watch them and it's like, yeah, but this isn't this person. Like Lindsay, you are yeah. who you are on video. Dustin, For you're sure. who you are and you have the high quality. So you have like the double banger going on there. But if you're not being yourself, then no one's going to watch the video, even if it's you know, Michael Bay status transformers, you know, production value. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah. totally agree with that. Um, I believe that what the video is about is dramatically more important than the quality of the video. Mm -hmm. and, well, and your, and your audience too, right? Like who, who you're focusing yes. your, your video yes. towards, right? Are you focusing it to other agents? Are you focusing it to a consumer trying to build your brand? That that's also super important too, right? Like who you're it, actually it trying is. to make the video for. Yes. So it, at a minimum, like if you, if you don't, if you're not at a place where you can go get a nice Sony camera or whatever that does 4k and blurs the background and all the shit, your iPhone is more than sufficient to build a multi-million dollar a year brand. Yeah. Because many, many, many others have done it. So just do that. What you, what you talk about in the videos matters. You have to know who you're speaking to. Yep. You know, there's a lot of agents that you can tell they don't really know who they're speaking to. They're trying to speak to everyone. And when you try to speak to everyone, you speak to no one. Yep. So you have to know who you're trying to reach. Are they buyers? Are they sellers? Are they young? Are they old? Do they live in this area or that area? Are they moving to the area or not? Like it, it really helps to know what these people look like. What is, what is the audience? What do they need? What, what do they struggle with? Because then when you, when you have them in mind, you create stuff that they need and that they actually will want to consume. And then guess what? They will. And then your following grows and your views grow. Yeah. You end up getting hired yeah. because you are bringing, you are bringing the right stuff to the right people rather than just this spray and pray thing that so many do. And, and I, I understand in the beginning when you're, tr when you're, you listen to us and you're, you're like, okay, I just need to start doing video and I need to do it consistently. I need to post more than once. Like I need to post at least once a day so people can see me there's a certain period of time where you can do shitty stuff and it's kind of all over the place while you're, while you're learning it. But at, at a certain point, you've really got to hone in and figure out who you're speaking to. And then past that, there's a certain point where video quality, production quality, audio quality, especially yeah. matters a lot. Uh, like a, a crappy backlit video that, that you can still hear is much better than a perfectly crisp 4k, with, you know, the, the neon light YouTube studio with <laughs> shitty audio. Yeah. You know, totally so agree. It all matters, yeah. but the video itself and what it's about and who it's for matters the most. Yes. 28% yeah. rate quality as essential. So 69% want more authentic authenticity, but 28% of that want high quality. Some of the best high quality videos in the game, by the way, check out Shane Bergman. His yes. content is through the roof quality wise. Like I've never seen anything like that in terms of neon studio mic quality just his video editing so check out him we'll uh we'll link him up in the comments a variety like he, he's a oh, yeah. like mixing in like funny kind of skits but also doing like a really good listening tour also showing his lifestyle with his kids and like his stupid hot tub plunge every day sorry shane yeah Love dude, the, dude the ice plunges <laughs> with realtors now it's like a, a new pandemic or epidemic of yeah. <laughs> realtors waking up at th dustin i'm surprised you're not doing it actually you're yeah. a healthy guy Oh, well, yeah. you are? Okay, there you go. Are you yeah. posting about it? I haven't seen him. Not yet. Not but yet. You better okay, believe you I will be. If I, thing, it is, you have to. Right? Here's the thing, though, with the, with the ice plunge content. Although it may be annoying, I do watch it every time because I picture myself <laughs> trying to do it, and I'm like, 
I would not do this for one second. I know I wouldn't. I would get out immediately. It looks horrible. And I don't understand how people aren't sitting in there shivering their ass off. Yeah. Like I see Zach Loft do it or Shane Bergman did it yesterday at like 1 a.m. And wait, he's just sitting in there like it's a jacuzzi. Wait, Eric, do you remember when we were at uh, the conference? We were at Vegas and we see Zach Loft just passing us and he's soaking wet, like mid-conference. Like, <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> soaking wet. He was literally dripping wet. <laughs> like he just got out of the ice plunge. No, yeah. You you see it on the vlog. He's like, yeah, I just did the ice bath up in room 350. Like, uh, uh, you know, yeah. out. I'm like, dude, you were – the other thing too is I got some ugly-ass like Frodo-looking feet. I'm not like putting a camera up over there and like tiptoeing myself into a bath shirtless. Like nobody wants to see that. Um, I respect yeah. it, and I know that the ice bath does help. Like I'll run the shower for like 15 seconds. I'm cold, but – why is that? Oh, wow. like, you're you're yeah. a real warrior in there oh, huh? for God. 15 like, seconds. It's, it's like 75 it. degrees. It's, it's like CrossFit. Bigger. The first rule of CrossFit is you have to talk about CrossFit. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. Same with yeah. the ice baths. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We, we just went off on a super tangent here. Uh, right. it, yeah. Let us know in the comments yeah. if you like the ice luge, ice bath content that you're seeing all over the place. Yes. Nobody yeah. likes it. I did yeah. a poll yesterday. 111 people answered. 72% are over the ice bath content. I don't think we want to see it anymore. There you go. But it's hate watching. I'm telling you, it's hate watching. Yeah. I, I do it myself. But I'm foaming to get to, to topic number two, uh, if you guys don't mind. Uh, I'm salivating, if that's okay. By all means. All right. Topic number two. I can't stop you, so. No, you're right. You're right. You you're know, the host. You're right. You can't. Right. Unless you were in person physically, then you could very easily stop me. But you were not. So topic number two from Bam Staff. The listing appointment mistake that's probably costing you. This is from Sharon. Uh, from real Haley, can we put the clip in here before I dive into this? Sharon. Thing an agent can do in a listing appointment that will dramatically increase their chances of winning is not to do the tour first. Okay. Because you walk in the door and the entire tour that you take, Byron's head is behind me. I have no rapport. And yeah. after I start doing the tour, you start asking questions. Oh, have you seen that house? Have you seen this house? Our kitchen's better. And you have no rapport and you have to answer all these questions. And by the time you come back and ready to sit down, what happens? You've put yourself in a defensive position. hundred percent. Okay. The key thing that an agent should walk in and say, hey, Byron, great to see you. Where can we sit down and strategize? That's it. Take the tour intentionally. When you see the energy and the lull drop in the, in the appointment, say, hey, Mr. Mrs. Seller, I'd love to uh, take a tour of the house, but I want to do it in two ways. First, I'd love for you to walk me through so that I can see how you live here and why it's good for you. But after that, I want to walk it through by myself to see what a buyer would see overall. First of all, the audio on that was absolutely insane. It sounded like they were in the middle of the uh, the Islanders game there. Um, and, and secondly, so Sharon's the president of Real Brokerage, right? Like, let's just put that out there. This is no disrespect to him. Sharon's a legend. Yeah, he's a legend. Um, he is the president of Real again, and I'm sitting here as the host of the walkthrough. So what's the first thing that – so Sharon says the first thing when you walk in on your listing appointment, aside from usual greeting – if your first move is to ask for a tour of the property, you're putting yourself and your client at a disadvantage. He goes on to say, think about it. During the tour, you're pretending, well, we just heard all this, so I'm going to skip it. <laughs> just repeat the <laughs> entire yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. But basically, he just said the number one thing to do is not do the tour first and to start at the table. He also said, a, and we just listened to it, he also said that you should do two tours. After, so sit down first, then you do a tour, then you do a second tour as like a buyer. This is, I completely disagree. I, again, I'm so sorry. Don't come at me, real brokerage, but this is, I'm going to drop an F. I'm just fucking insane. I, I preach, and you guys tell me I'm genius. wrong. What? You, what? I think it's genius. <laughs> he In said a lot he thinks it's genius. Okay, yeah. so let's, let's, let's go back and forth yeah. on this. So I teach my team, and I've, I go on 20 listing appointments a week. The first thing I do is, you know, ask them where I can put my stuff down, but you got to take a tour of the property. And, and while I'm doing that, I am taking notes and I am building rapport with the seller because I'm asking questions. Oh, when did you do this? When did you do that? But I'm also seeing the features of the home. How can I sit down at the table before anything and talk about price and talk about strategy when I don't even know what, what the house, nothing about the house. So tour first, then you're building rapport, you're building rapport. I'm asking funny questions, whatever, whatever. Then you sit down and now, okay, I just saw a waterfall in the backyard. Now I know that that's going to increase the value. I just saw the crown molding. I know that's going to increase, Right. How can you start at the table and then do a tour? And then a second tour? You're going to table, tour, tour? What are you there for, six <laughs> hours? My God, it's insane. How, Dustin, go ahead. It's a little dramatic, Dan, but, but <laughs> I, I get your point. Look, you're right. 
And so is he, there's more than one way to do a successful listing presentation. Yeah. And, and so there's some cons to what he said, but there's also some stuff that I never considered, right? Like build rapport first. Like that should be the first thing to do is it, first priority anyways, is to build that rapport. You can go see the house and you don't have to talk about price two minutes after sitting down for the first time. What, right? what, do, you, what do you do when you sit down? All right. So I just met you. I sit down at your table. Shoot the shit. Shoot the shit. And they're you gonna, probably know their cousin, about, right? But you, you know what they want? They want, <laughs> what's, my, what's my house going to sell for? How are you going to You're the cousin in the, anyway. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. So you're like, well, we should probably see the house. Like walk me through the house. Uh, what was interesting was. <laughs> <laughs> so you sit I, down I, and then immediately say, walk me through the house. Yeah, right. I think I think having some flexibility in a situation like that, but having your priorities like, hey, the first priority is to build rapport with the seller. Otherwise, you're just another robot agent. That they're going to forget 10 minutes after you leave. Right. So if if you do ever, if you do do it the same way everyone else does, there's nothing special about you. They're going to recognize that you do things differently than others. They're going to recognize you that you took the time to chat with them like, hey, why are you moving? Why are you selling it? Where are you going? You know, what's the deal? But you don't get their motivations first. But you don't think that those are questions you can ask while you're taking the tour? Of course. Sharon's point, though, was more about the the positioning of walking and everything. Like, you know, if you're behind the person or you're side by side, then you stop and chat. And then you're kind of standing awkwardly in the hallway. I mean, I haven't been on many listing presentations, so I don't really know (laughs) exactly how how this goes necessarily. But I've certainly walked with people and talked with people before. And like, dude, think about it. When I was walking with Pantana outside of TF, we were walking and it's hard to keep pace with the person and we're going back and forth. You know what I'm talking about? Like it it is easier to sit down face to face when you're not, you know, trying to keep pace and and trying to remember what you're, what you're going to say. Lindsay, what do you think? What do you do at listing presentations? I do the tour for first. I think you should do the tour first and then sit down and build rapport. Yeah. Okay. And, and you're like, building rapport while you're walking around and asking the questions because, yeah. of course, listen again, I'm going on 20 of these a week. I'm my team too. When you sit down at that table, they want to know price. They want to know marketing strategy. They want to know about you. Yeah. But you don't really, you can't articulate those things without seeing, without giving the tour first and like, you know, start off by, Hey, can I take my shoes? You know, should I take my shoes off? Shoes on. You mind giving me the grand tour, right? Like you make a joke out of it. And as you're, you know, walking around, as you get like an awkward pause, hey, where are you guys headed? Where, how long you been here for? Start asking, what are you guys in an ideal world looking for price wise? You start asking these questions. So when you sit down to go over the marketing and, and the strategy and the pricing and all that stuff, now you've kind of already built the rapport and it's a little more re- relaxing, right? Like, yeah, yeah. The, the comment section, there. the comment section on this post. So we did it on Instagram. We posted the highlight, and the highlight did really well of Sharon talking. But then we just did a quote swiper. And that got a completely different reaction because maybe it's a little less out of context and you can't hear the way Sharon's saying it with such confidence. Um, some of the comments couldn't disagree more. Get them moving around the house. Motion creates emotion. Uh, that was the most liked comment. Someone said, you guys are deaf just trying to get us to engage by disagreeing with it. I mean, the comments were overwhelmingly against this. Someone said, we usually do the tour first. We find it helps the sellers open up and you learn a lot more this way about the house and the way they care about it. Um, yeah, Someone, I mean, like they're they're there, showing, a, they're showing one more. Their home that they put you know time and love and energy, in, like they're bragging about their home and they're excited to show you, right? Like, I just don't see how sitting at the table awkwardly and then saying, "Oh, let's go for the tour," and and then the second part of it too was like, now you do a second tour as as like a buyer, you're gonna be, you're gonna be there all day. Like, I feel like people would be yeah. like, they want you out. No. Someone said, if you're touring the house first, you're either not well prepared or you're so afraid of objections. You're praying that you find some far-fetched item in the house in common to talk about. So there, there was some agreement with Sharon there. Someone said, this is not good advice. It's a fantastic way to build rapport. Someone said, do the tour in the middle. So it looks like the comments are, are pretty mixed on this. But another point from this article that Sharon made, which I thought was the most genius point, was how to brand the other agents during the listing appointment. So if everyone is saying like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put on the MLS and Zillow and it's going to upload to Trulia, he said to brand that type of speak as of course marketing. And there's a clip for this as well, too, that maybe we could patch in afterwards. But calling the other agents and branding the other agents saying that's of course marketing, like, of course, you're going to have uh, your own website and property photos and everything like that's not interesting to anybody. What is it differently that you're going to do? So, I mean, follow Sharon because he he has a lot of 
like brilliant takes on this. And he's got a lot of different ways for agents to open emails. And he he's all about these different strategies to stand out. So even if a lot of the agents disagreed with this, as Dustin said, maybe it does make more sense because at least you're starting off the appointment on a different foot than the other person. And I think it's just whatever, you know, it's going to work for different people, right? Like what yes. works for me might not work for Dustin, might not work for, you know, like it's, you know, everybody's different. It's just, I've found what has worked for me and my team and, and I'm sticking with that. So, yeah. Right. So let us know in the comments, do you do the tour before or do you do the tour after you sit down? I want to get a debate going. And do you do a second tour? What is it? Yeah. What is no. Uh, yeah. The second tour is probably a little bit much. Uh, what, what I think is really awesome about this is it shows that there's more than one right way to do things yeah. in this industry. So often we try to put everyone into a freaking box. Everyone must do this certain thing. Everyone must do it this way. Read this freaking script, do this, do that. But there's people being wildly successful. There's agents being wildly successful doing everything. Everything works and nothing doesn't. So it, it you've got to, this video was thought provoking. It showed, Hey, there's a different way because some people may do it the way you do Dan and they feel like a fish out of water. It feels unnatural for them and they feel like they're swimming upstream and it, it, when it's not natural and when you're not comfortable, you don't do well yep. and the seller feels it. it is just, it's just weird. So now they're like, Holy crap, there's a different way. Let's try this. That is positive. There's yes. no one right way to do anything in this industry. Yeah. Um, one interesting fact too, um, and I think everybody should do this. I, I've been doing my way for the longest time, right? I went on a listing appointment with a newer agent on my team and they, we can't really talk about commission of course, but on the appointment, they, uh, you know, did the commission objection a different way that I've never seen done before. And it was like, it was like mind blowing to me and a light bulb went off and I will be using that for the end of time now. Um, and it was just by tagging along with somebody else right? Like somebody in your office, somebody in your team, brokerage, whatever, you know, just saying, Hey, can I come with you or, or vice versa? I picked something up that I will now use for the rest of my career. And I'm sure, you know, they did too, vice versa. So I think, you know, sometimes tagging along and seeing how other people do it is always a positive. Absolutely. I remember like early in my real estate career, I would go on listing appointments with my bosses at the time. And I loved the walking around the house part because there were specific aspects of the house that I could potentially make a joke or find some commonality in. It was the second I was sitting at that table because I knew nothing at the age of 25 and was basically just relying on the people whose real appointment it was. I would just sit there like an asshole at the table for 30 minutes, not saying anything, basically providing negative value because they're like, why is this, you know, frat guy sitting here just, you know, looking at me in, in a suit that doesn't fit. So... I liked, I, I do like the motion actually. So I, I agree with you, Dan, now that I've. Yeah. And, and you, and you see it. things like whether it be a car, whether it be a garage, whether it be they got, you know, a Yankees poster on the, like if I see a Mets sheet or an Islander, if I see a Rangers, you know, like anything, it's just that, that gives me the opportunity to like kind of open up and be myself. Yeah. And so, there right. was one more, there was, there was just, sorry, one more comment where it's like, if you're walking around the house and it was previously listed at five bedrooms and then you see a bedroom and it's really more like a four four and a half or something then that's something you could take into the actual presentation you're like all right you know what it was listed as five but i just looked at the bedroom the things you know two square mm -hmm. feet and there's no windows and no closets so yeah. we're actually going to probably have to reduce the price and not list this as a five so and somebody who said in the comments too like you're not prepared well what happens if the, the person's owned the home for 40 years like you don't know what kind of upgrades and, and things that they've done um we always send a uh, we always send like a pre uh, marketing packet, right? Like a little black book the night before that has all of our information, statistics, so on and so forth. So that helps. But sometimes you go on public record or geodata or whatever you're using, you don't know the exact details. Um, so right. whatever, yeah. let, let us know what you think here. Po you know, positive, negative, agree, disagree. And Eric, speaking of marketing. Yep. Yeah, I got you. So I was just talking about Pantana when I was walking with him. Pantana is the marketing guru. He is the man. He is the Tom Ferry marketing guy. And if you are interested in taking your marketing game from rookie to rock star, look no further than Jason Pantana's Marketing Pro. We are true believers that marketing can make or break your brand and business. Just look at our first segment. So become a marketing pro by purchasing one or all of his three modules, Cracking the Social Code, Google Business Boss, and Inbox Hero. Our listeners will also get a 10% discount by using code BAMPRO at checkout. Visit http colon slash slash tomferry.com slash mpb 
to learn more. Also, there's oh a link goodness. down below. And look at this. If you're watching this walkthrough, we're going to give away a free module of Marketing Pro. We're going to pick it next week on the walkthrough. So just walk through. So just comment the word pro and we will pick the winner live on the walkthrough. Was, comment the word wow. pro. Let's go. That, that was really good. That was that was very impressive. That was, uh, that was a Thank mouthful. You. I, I, yeah, I like how you how you comment on all the ad reads to make sure that I was I was doing it correctly. So it's good to know <laughs> that that one was done well. Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you either way. All yeah. right, on, on to topic number three: first time home buyers optimistic amid uncertain market. So a TD Bank survey of one thousand and seven, such a weird number. Uh, U.S. consumers planning to buy a home in twenty twenty three find that first time home buyers are optimistic, with thirty nine percent saying it is a good time to buy. While some who want to buy a home have decided to keep renting for now, rising rents are driving more renters towards home ownership. The report suggests that volatile mortgage rates and low inventory uh, still first time home buyers remain optimistic. Um, consumer perception of the economy and housing affordability may not be glowing right now, but rising rents are driving more of them towards buying. So I could speak to this as somebody that has bought and sold in the last couple of years. My rent now has is almost at the level of what my you know four thousand square foot home uh, was, and I could also speak to it in the sense of what we're seeing on Zillow and my buyers and and our team. We are seeing a lot of first time home buyers that are in the market that rent is just insane. People have to buy. We have the seven Ds that we talked about last week. Um, Lindsay, what are you seeing in your market right now? Are you seeing a lot of you know first time home buyers um, out there? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I mean, a lot of my first time home buyers, I can't afford to buy. So it's kind of the opposite of what you just said. Um, even though the rent is increasing in our area, it's still cheaper to rent than to purchase right now. Um, and even though rent's going up, everyone's, um, you know, income is kind of staying the same. So it's, it's been kind of tough, to be honest. Yeah, well, one of the parts in the in this article, too, though, was that people are making more money after the pandemic. And that's why it is driving them to potentially buy as a first time home buyer. Um, and in New York, I mean, rent is absolutely insane. I'm sure LA the mm -hmm. same. So, you know, if you, if you're renting and you're paying $4,000 a month for a one or two bedroom, right? Like you can go buy a house. If you have, you know, 10% down, 5% down. Dustin, what are you seeing in your market? Are you seeing a overwhelming majority of first time home buyers or kind of the same thing as Lindsay? Uh, I wouldn't say an overwhelming majority, but it, it feels to me like first timers are just saying, you know what, the upside of buying and owning is so much greater than this interest rate crap. Like the, the yes, I'm, I can't get a 2% rate anymore. Mm -hmm. I've got to go with a five or a six or a seven or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they've just, it, it's baked in now. And I believe that social media and all the content out there about wealth building and finance that talks about the wisdom of buying homes, I think that factors in. I think that certainly is helping people understand that, hey, like buying a home could be the best financial decision you ever make to kind of kick that first domino over. And I Googled this real quick. Uh, this article came out 2022. According to a recent study by the Federal Reserve, the median net worth of homeowners is 40 times higher than the median net worth of renters. And first off, if that's even half accurate, that's insane. And there's so much content out there that kind of speaks to that. Like you buy the first house and then you can house hack and three years later you can sell it and all this stuff, right? I think that's helping first timers get over this interest rate, doom and gloom, the economy is about to take a shit crap that you hear in the media. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, hey, this is actually a wise move long-term. So. There you go. There's my two cents. Well, and it's, it's also on us, to, right, to to educate the people yes. that follow us, our friends, our family. How many people, I mean, we just had Greek Easter, you had Passover, you had Easter. How many people ask you, how's the market? How's real estate? And being able to articulate exactly what's going on and like, do you have any interest in buying, selling, investing? You just, you know, like you always get the same answer like, oh, it's insane. It's crazy. Yeah, you got to be the knowledge broker, right, Dan? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, speaking of knowledge broker, Eric, this affects you in a sense, right? And, and although- it? Yeah, well, because number one, you are going to be a first-time home buyer when the time is right. But number two, you're actually looking for a car. <laughs> yeah. You are looking for a car right now. Yeah, you make it sound like a bum. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for a car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You'll eventually I'm, own a house, and he's looking for a car. Yeah, oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Just yeah, I'm a suit. And a first-time home buyer, and Eric right now is in the process of buying a new car. So, yes. Eric, 
you are now, you know, two years later making more money. You are looking at a new car. And I, my question, I guess, to you is to try to tie you in somehow here, man. <laughs> I, I got a lot to say. I got a lot to yeah. say. Don't worry. Dude, like, do you care? But right now, is, are rates yeah. affecting you? Are, is inventory affecting you? Not really. No. Um, we're looking, we are looking at cars. And I have a question for you, Dan, yeah. and for, for anybody at home. So I'm looking at a, a BMW, possibly. I'm lo- I was looking between a three series and a five series, but I have heard that if you get a three series, it's a fool's move because it's like, you're kind of getting a BMW just to get a BMW, but it's like not that sick of a car. So what do you guys think, Dan? I know your thoughts on this. You thought you told me a three series was psychotic to buy. Well, cause I almost bought one and then I, I was told that it was psychotic and I got chirped. So I had to go, I brought it back, didn't buy it. And then I went five series. So, right. I have Dustin a question. Lindsay, is, thoughts? is it yeah. is it a white is it a white BMW? No, it's not. It would be black. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, I, I think know, you the, can't go the wrong. typical real yeah. car. Yeah. Dustin. Uh, all I know is my dad had a purple <laughs> Beamer Five Series back in the day with purple leather interior. Mm-hmm. Uh, we called it the eggplant, and it was fantastic. But that's okay. all I know. Is your dad Austin Powers? What the hell? <laughs> he made as well of <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, Jesus the, Christ. With All right, I have some I have, I have some actual takeaways on this article. So 54, 54% of uh, the people surveyed said they are doing better now financially than they were two years ago. 39% are saying now is a good time to buy and they are saving up for their down payment. Six in 10 of these surveyors are looking for fixer uppers. So first time home buyers, 60% looking for fixer uppers. So maybe start interweaving that into your content a little bit. Like, hey, here's a fixer upper, doing some green screens, sending more fixer uppers to those people. And then doing more education on down payment assistance, how to talk to a lender, that type of thing. So if there's this you know larger influx of first time home buyers, doing more educational content specific to them, I think would be really beneficial. So there you go. Yeah, there you go, Eric. Hell yeah. Yeah, there we go. Somebody, Wiggled I mean, my way out of that one, huh? Yeah, you really did. Looking for a fixer-upper as somebody that's renovated my home before. I mean, it is just people, you know, see that the TV shows, they see HGTV, and they, you know, think that they could just all of a sudden renovate their home. It is not easy, and it is not yeah. fun. But it's not. to each their own. All right, let us know if you are seeing first-time home buyers out in your market right now. Let us know. We have a two-month supply of inventory locally for me right now, which is like, that's got to be less than a, that's like a double seller's market. It's, it's wild. There's 12 homes listed out of, I think, 8,600 in my market right now, in my town. Not 12. 12. It's crazy. It's rough that's out crazy. there. How many of those listings do you have? Three. Nice. Good job. Solid. All right. <laughs> let, us, let us know if you're seeing uh, first time home buyers in your market. Eric, I want to pass this to you here. This is a, uh, a speaking of marketing, a rapping realtor, Steven Diaz. So a few weeks ago, we put up the Tony B. He absolutely blew up. Tony B is the best marketer in real estate. I love the guy. I've tried calling his office 1,000 times, and, and nobody's there. So I don't know how you even get a hold of him. You got to maybe know a guy that knows a guy. Um, <laughs> but now we also, we're, we're trying to promote people that are doing really, really well here on social. And this guy, Steven Diaz, is so good at rapping. And the videos are awesome. So do we have a, a clip here? Yeah, we have like five of these. So I wanted to play a couple, get your guys' thoughts. Lindsay, I know you did like a I lip did. sync to one of his raps. I did. And usually like real estate rap. I did real estate rap in 2015. Cringe as hell. There's a lot oh, of real estate oh. rappers. Uh, I think this guy is one of the best. Yeah. Um, there's a guy out of Florida named Sean who's also very good. But yeah. usually when you see these real estate raps, you're like, oh, God, like this is going to be the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. This guy could actually spit. So, Haley, why don't you play one of these? I wish we had Eric's teed up from 2015. Oh, my God. I've seen that video. and It's fire, oh actually. God. Honestly, my, my lyrics are good, but I got, no, uh, I got no flow. All right, play this. If I sell one home, then I'm higher. If I sell five homes, I ain't tired. If I sell ten homes, I'm on fire. If you want to sell your house, I got a buyer. Yeah. Damn. Listen with me and get some money. Listen All right, next one. Money. So b- oh. basically what what he does also is he does like if Bad Bunny were a realtor or if Dr. Yeah. Dre were a realtor. So Haley, oh, why don't you just play? Bad Bunny one. That yeah, way. yeah, play, play the Bad Bunny one. If he's, if he's play, doing Bad Bunny, I'm about to follow him right now. Yeah, you should. Damn. If I have a lot of listings. Ooh, I have one today, tomorrow another. Yeah. But they're all pending. My buyers ask me if I have a lot of listings. Hey. A lot of listings. Damn. Tomorrow another. 
yeah. Hey, hey. I know they're gonna sell, I'll be giving out the keys, giving out the keys, hey. Closing day, best believe that we're gonna take a selfie. Say cheese. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. take oh, a selfie. Good. Say oh, cheese. Un VIP, un VIP, hey. We got one more. That was that yeah, was yeah. incredible. Haley, play play the next one. Dustin, are you enjoying this? You look <laughs> miserable. He's very enthused. <laughs> I love it. I'm trying to you figure out bad how bad is, Bunny Dustin. is. Dustin probably bad listened Bunny to Matt Zeppelin and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let her it all I'm there. proud to be <laughs> an American. <laughs> That's all Dustin listens to on repeat. Take me home. <laughs> That's my ringtone. Yeah. Take me home. At least you know I'm free. <laughs> got oh, to God. stand up. All right, go ahead, Haley. Oh, just rates going up, prices start to drop. Why you sitting on the fence, man? You need to stop. Two bad rates, yeah, they came and went. You probably won't ever see that interest rate again. Nah. House is still selling, what recession? Don't hesitate to buy. Why you second guessing? All this overthinking really got me stressing. Got me stressing. Get you in the house, first time buyer, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. We go hard selling homes now, nah, we don't ever stop. I mean, these are fire. So good. Amazing. These are these are actual fire. Like yeah. the actual content, the lyrics, the beats, the production value, his voice. This guy's clearly a good yeah. rapper, good singer. So totally. Yeah. Shout out this guy. Everyone yeah. follow him. Lindsay, you used his audio and, and did. you did absolute numbies, right? I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 you should, yeah. Um, I watched him blow up. So he had 1,800 followers when I posted that video in like February, and I watched him today. I think he has like 35,000. Um, he's so cool because I feel like his content is so shareable, and that's really why he's blown up so much. And I feel like we need more of these like rapping realtors, like the good no, ones. No, 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 no. No, we no? don't. We do not need <laughs> the more good of these ones. People realtors. who can we actually could... rap. I mean, yes. think about how limited that is to be a realtor and to actually be able to spit like that. I, th th I think there's two or three of them. No, if I tried it, my wife would divorce me. So <laughs> take me home. Justin, I would pay to see that actually. <laughs> I, I think you don't have to, just because he's doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. Yeah. Right. Unless that's you, right? right. That's he, that's him. He enjoys it. He's obviously good at it and he's leaned into it. That's awesome. You just need to find yeah. out whatever the hell that is for you. It's not for me. People right. are people are using this guy's audios though. So that that yes. realtor one, what's that one, Lindsay? The yeah, the Drake one. The yeah. realtor, can you do something for me? Can you sing it for us? No. In that tone? Okay. Well, <laughs> no. yeah, it's like realtor, <laughs> can you what, do something? Yeah. You know, you know what it is basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've <laughs> seen that how did that go, Eric? <laughs> I've seen that audio. Yeah. thousands of times so realtors are actually using his raps you use his raps for a video yep. and then he also has some really funny real estate skits Haley, there's a lockbox one i think it might be the last one i shared with you if we could play that too so he's hitting it from all angles he's doing raps he's doing comedy but in terms of escapism dustin this guy yeah. is the definition of escapism because all of these videos are extremely high quality entertaining mm -hmm. funny and shareable Haley, i don't know if we have that I, one I hyped up here it is Oh, oh, that dreaded man. Sorry about that. Just... I'm getting anxiety just watching this. Uh, right? <laughs> this time I got it. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, you know, batteries run out sometimes. Things happen, you know. But it, it probably wasn't even that nice inside, you know. Like the grass isn't even green. See, he does these POV videos where it's like this awkward encounter where it's, you know, from his point of view. And it's him discussing with the client what just happened so i think this guy's content is brilliant i hope he keeps blowing up i'd love to do some collab posts with him bring him on bam uh love this guy we should get him on next episode and talk to him about these rounds really steven diaz um yeah. and i guarantee he's known in his market like he probably goes around town and people are like hey that's the, the rapping realtor almost like if he goes to a conference right he's known yeah. for something he yeah. just he just came out with merch too so he has these realtor hats like he's pretty he's pretty smart yeah, he's kind of a big deal. Bring him on. Yeah. People know yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You got merch? Yeah. That's legit. Uh, why don't we, why don't we have I know. Why don't why don't you guys have oh look, we got a BAM shirt right here. We're we're gonna reopen the store here a little bit, but no. you know, we've been you focused... have a BAM shirt. I do yeah. not. You're right. I'll send you one, Dustin. And <laughs> I'll send one you one, Dan, and I'll send <laughs> you one, Lindsay. But I want one. You know, we've been focused on delivering content. We also have this. Over ass yeah. mug with the logo in the wrong place and it's backwards. <laughs> so if you do want to purchase that, you can't actually. Oh man! Wow. All right, well, uh, 
<laughs> I got nothing. Oh, all God. right. Well, I, I got something. If you enjoyed the real estate wrapper, if you enjoyed all the content that we have delivered, make sure you throw this a like and sub to the channel. Go check out the massive agent channel. He just did a great episode on how agents can retire. That was a great episode. Lindsay, go check her out. Funniest content in the game. Go check out Danny Deals and make sure you sign up for our BAM Mastermind. If you are in the Southeast, if you're in Florida or you're anywhere in the country, this is going to be the best golf mastermind on the planet. May 5th, link in the description. Let's go. Country road, take me home. <laughs> Fucking hate that music. I'm proud to be an American. I like that Because at least you know I'm free. Oh, is that oh, you singing? I couldn't figure out who was singing. Yeah. That's Eric in his angelic voice. Uh -huh.